Sadly. Okay, let's see if Ellie's gonna let me like make this video. Uh, so this is Derek and Ellie, and this is section 5.5, Applications of Quadratic Functions and the Difference Quotient. So this is the difference quotient that we saw back in, I think it was chapter one, or maybe chapter two with linear equations. Um, it's back again with quadratics. And so to evaluate the difference quotient, remember this was our formula that's going to eventually lead to pretty much first quarter calculus, but right now we're using it more as a um, exercise in function notation. So this is telling us to evaluate the function at x plus uh, h. So coming over here, that would be 5, and then x plus h is going in for that x. So it would be squared plus 3, x plus h minus 6. And then we're going to take away f of x, which is our original function. So 5x squared plus 3x minus 6. And then that's all over h. And again, this difference quotient, remember this kind of went with our average rate of change, where we were finding this was x. We had some distance in here, h. So this was x plus h. And what we're doing is finding that slope again. Um, and when we get to calculus, what we do is we let h go to zero, and instead of a secant line, this becomes a tangent line on the curve. Uh, so you'll see this a lot in uh, 151. Um, so once I'm here, let's go ahead and expand this out. Remember this x plus h squared is really x plus h, x plus h, so you're gonna do a FOIL there, and that's gonna come out five, and then x squared plus two xh, when you do the inside and the outside, plus the h squared, here we're going to have plus 3x plus 3h minus 6. Distribute that sign through, minus 5x squared minus 3x plus 6. All of that is over h. My pen might be dying. Let's go over to this one. Um, and then we'll distribute the 5 through, and then I'm just going to rewrite all this stuff, and so I'll cut away and come back. Okay, so here this is with the 5, I just ran through, and then everything else I just brought down. Um, if everything goes right, remember everything in this f of x here should cancel with something earlier. So plus 6 minus 6 worked, plus 3x minus, oh, 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 I got a sign error. Where is it? Oh, that's a minus. So it didn't cancel. So you could totally catch your sign errors that way. So minus 3x plus 3x, and then minus 5x squared plus 5x squared. And then let me rewrite what's left for clarity because people often lose that term right there. And that's all over h. And then the second thing that should ha happen is this h should cancel in everywhere. If it didn't, then something's kind of gone wrong in your math. And that's how I knew I had a bad sign right here too. So this should end up 10x plus 5h plus three. And then if you just let that h go to zero, right there it becomes calc one. And so again, you're gonna see this a bunch coming up. Okay, the rest of the section is gonna be applications with quadratics. Um, so this first one goes, the length of a rectangle is five inches longer than its width. If the area is 66 inches, what are the dimensions of the rectangle? So I am going to let the um, width be x and then the length is uh, five inches longer than the width. So that would be however long the width is plus five. And then the other piece of information we know is the area and that is 66 inches squared. So what are the dim dimensions? So for remember for a rectangle, um, it's, this would be like our x, this is our x plus 5, and then we go length times width, and that equals area. So area equals length times width, or width times length, which is the order I'm going to write it in, just because it'll look nicer. So uh, 66 equals the width times the length, and then that gets us to something quadratic that we can solve. So um, let's run the x through. So that gives us 66 equals x squared plus 5x. Remember when we have a quadratic, we want to get to zero, so we're going to bring the 66 over. Zero equals x squared plus 5x, and now minus 66. Um, looks like it's going to factor. So two numbers that multiply would be 66. 
negative 66 and then our five apart would be a positive 11 and a negative six. So negative 11 does not make sense um, as a distance. So it looks like X is going to be six and then six plus five, that would make the other one 11. So this one is six and then the length is 11. And the reason we get those two solutions is because if this was negative six times negative 11, right, that, would, that would also end up working out. It just doesn't make sense in terms of the application. Okay, number three goes, the width of a rectangle is five less than twice its length. The area is 195 centimeters squared. What is the length of the diagonal this time instead of the um, uh, one of the sides? So let me get a little picture going up here. This is asking for the diagonals. I'm gonna call that D. And length, um, the width is blah, blah, blah in terms of the length. So that's gonna let me let, I want length to be X. And then I wanna write width in terms of it. So I'm gonna let length be X. And then the width is, so that's like equals, five less than twice the length. So two X and then five less than that. So this side's X and this side's two X minus five. Um, and it doesn't mean that this side's long and this side's short. This is just how they described it to us. Um, so they we're looking for the diagonal, but to find the diagonal, I would need the length of each of these sides. And to get these sides, what they gave me was area. So that tells me I'm gonna go back to area equals length times width again. Use that to figure out what these X's are. So that gets me the, the lengths. And then I can do um, Pythagorean theorem uh, to get at the diagonal. So uh, this is gonna go X and then two X minus five equals 195. And then I'll foil, bring the 195 over and sorry, distribute and bring the 195 over. So two X squared minus five X minus 195, that makes zero. Um, can't factor anything out uh, in terms of a common factor. This does not look like it's gonna turn out to be nice numbers. So I would just go straight to the quadratic formula, which is what I did. So we'll have five, negative to negative five is five plus or minus five squared minus four times A times C, all over two A, so two times two. And then I kind of tossed all that in the calculator and this came out to five plus or minus root uh, 1585 over four. Um, this negative root isn't gonna make sense, same as the last example that we're just getting um, a positive and a negative version. Um, that's the positive one we want. So if you do five plus square root of 1585, enter divided by four, enter in the calculator, I got X to equal 11.203 with more decimals. And it's telling me to give my answer, answer two decimal places. So I kind of went with, I think I mostly calculated with three and then rounded and that kept it within where I was gonna match to the second decimal. Um, so once we know that, then our, that is our length. So then our width, that is going to be two times that value minus five. So that came out to 17.406. Okay, so then here we got the width as 17.406, length is 11.203. Again, doesn't matter which one, we label short and long, they, they will come out as they do. And then remember we have a Pythagorean theorem that says a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So this is our a and our b, and what we're looking for is c, which in this case I labeled d for the diagonal. Um, so we'll do 17.406 squared plus 11.203 squared, and that's gonna equal um, d. And then I'll throw the root over this side, and then that undoes the square on this side. And after that, I just chunked all that into the calculator, and I got 428 with some stuff. And then the square root of that, D came out to 20.70 to two decimals.
Okay, so this one goes, a gardener has 840 feet of fencing to fence a rectangular garden. One side of the garden is bordered by a river and so it does not need any fencing. Uh, what dimensions would guarantee that the garden has the greatest possible area? Okay, so if we're maximizing something um, and it's in the land of quadratics and it involves an area, that sounds like it's going to turn into an upside down parabola and what we're going to find is there's going to be some length of fencing here that is going to maximize area. So this sounds like a vertex problem. Anytime we're looking for mins and maxes, that's going to be kind of a, a turning point situation. So uh, we got to figure out, we know he has a total of 840 feet of fencing and we're trying to fence these two lengths that are the same and then this third length that's different. So let's call the two that are the same, let's call those X. Um, so then that means I would have 840 feet of fencing minus these two sides is what I have left over for this. So this would be 840 minus 2X and that would represent that piece right there. So now to try to figure out the area, the area is going to be length times width again. So that's going to be area is x times 840 minus 2x. Uh, so then distributing the area will equal 840x minus 2x squared. And then um, the area is going to be at a maximum, like I said, when we're at the uh, vertex. So if this had was all width, um, say, and no length, the area would be zero. And if it's all length and no width, the area would be zero. That's these two places. And in between there, you can kind of guess it's going to be square. Um, that's the spot <coughs> where we're going to maximize area. So to find the vertex, um, in this case, I think the easiest way is x equals negative b over 2a. And that's going to give us the x coordinate um, that we would need to maximize. So let's see, this would be x equals negative b over 2a would be negative 840 over 2 times negative 2. So that's double negative, so positive, and 210. So 210 feet would be this side. And then if you do 840 minus 210, that's going to give you 420 feet for this side. And so we're kind of getting these two squares. Um, and then I think somewhere uh, it also asks you what would be the, um, the maximum area. And so in that case, you would just say area equals 210 times 420. And I got 88,220 uh, square feet for the area. Okay, and then the last one, the height of an object tossed upward with an initial velocity of 112 feet per second is given by the formula, this thing, where h is the height in feet and t is the time in seconds. Uh, so first is uh, find the, the time required for the object to return to its point of departure. And so what that means is um, if it's returning to its point of departure, that its height would be zero again. So, and we know that because when um, t is zero, h is zero, right? So what we're solving is negative 116t squared plus 112t. And I would factor a negative 16 out of there. Actually, I'm going to write the zero on the other side just because it looks better to me. And that's going to leave a t, and then that will flip that sign to a minus 7 equals 0. And so then here we have uh, negative 16t equals 0. So t equals 0. That makes sense. At t equals 0, it's leaving the ground. And then here at t equals 7, that's when it would be uh, returning back to the ground. Um, and then what is the maximum height of the ball? So maximum height, anytime again we're maximizing, that's going to be a vertex. So we could do uh, the vertex, the time, because this is height and this is time. So the easy way is it's going to be halfway between these two intercepts, right? So it's going to be at 3.5. If you want to confirm that, you can do t equals negative b over 2a, so negative 112 over 2 times negative 16. And jump that in a calculator and you will get 3.5 which makes sense because it would be halfway between when it left and when it landed. 
Um, and then to get the maximum height, yeah, uh, you just toss it back in here and solve for h. So h is going to be negative 16, 3.5 squared, plus 112, 3.5, and I got 196 feet.